not quantitatively the way Descartes did, the understanding of what makes a rainbow goes back to these, to these Arabs. But then it, it began to peter out, and after about 1100, uh, the great names of Arab science no longer appear. I mean, great names like Al-Razi and uh, uh, Ibn Sina, uh, Omar Khayyam, Al-Biruni, Al-Batani, they, they all, they're, they're not there anymore. Uh, some science continues to be done, but it dwindles out. Uh, the Arabs go on, or excuse me, the Muslims go on building observatories but even after the advent of telescopes in the West, they don't use telescopes because they're not interested in science. They're interested in building observatories to improve their calendars and to determine the Qibla, the direction to Mecca. Uh, science is definitely, in my view, although it's very controversial, and you get your head taken off saying this in, to the wrong people, um, the uh, science really began a decline in the world of Islam. And certainly when the scientific revolution came, although to some extent based on Arab work, uh, Tycho Brahe, Copernicus quoted uh, half a dozen Arab astronomers. Uh, it, it's all in the West. It's all in Europe. Um, and again, is that religion? I don't know. There is a, a, a great anti-scientific figure, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, who worked in Baghdad around 1100 and wrote a book called The Incoherence of the Philosophers, which is a um, polemic against science. He was very influential. But to what extent Islam in general, or al-Ghazali in particular, led to the decline of science in the Arab world, I just don't know. Um, it may be that civilizations lose steam, uh, maybe really losing steam. When you compare the public works, uh, this has nothing to do with science, but it's the same sort of thing in a way.